Hey gang, and welcome to your very first lesson on becoming an OAuth ninja. All right then, now before we start, I wanna make one thing clear. This is not a beginner series. I would expect you to, at the very least, know how to create a simple express app on Node.js, and a little bit of MongoDB knowledge would go a long way as well. So I've done playlists on both of these things. So if you wanna brush up your knowledge first of all, I'll leave the links to both of those down below and they're gonna be popping out on your screen right about now. For the rest of us, what is OAuth? Well, it stands for Open Authorization and it's just one approach to authenticating users inside your application. And it allows users to log into your app using third party services such as Facebook, uh, Google or GitHub, something like that. So when you see a website using these kinds of buttons right here, you can be pretty sure it's using OAuth to, uh, to, to authenticate users. So when we click one of these buttons on a website, we're basically signing up or logging into that website using one of our social profiles, if we have one. And we hand control of the signing process over to these third party services, Google or Facebook or something like that. And this is good for a couple of reasons. First reason is one less thing for us to worry about as a developer. It frees up time for us to focus on the cool bits of our website or application. And also it's one less thing for the user to worry about as well. They don't have to fill in any kind of forms to sign up to your website. They just have to click a button and accept that they're gonna sign in through Google or Facebook or something like that. And then they're signed up to your application as well. So it makes it really easy for users and we're not putting them off with all these different forms. And it means that a user could just have one or two central online identities through Facebook or GitHub or Google Plus, whatever social websites they use, and they can use those to log in in other applications. So in simple terms, this is what's happening when a user signs into a website or an app using OAuth. First of all, they land on our website and then they wanna sign up or log in. So they find the sign in with Google or the sign in with Facebook button right there and they click on that. Then they're gonna be redirected to Google servers to a consent screen. And this is Google basically telling the user that our application, our website over here, wants to access their profile so that they can sign up to our application with their profile, okay? And it's gonna to say to the user what information that this website or web app would like to access. So for example, the profile info or the email address. So when a user clicks allow right here, we're basically telling Google, okay, this website can use our profile information to sign up to this website, okay? I'm allowing that. So it's the user's choice and the great thing is we can see exactly what the application is gonna be using from our profile. And if it's too much, then we can deny access and we can find another way to log in. So when a user clicks allow, it's gonna redirect them back to our website and essentially log them into our website using their social credentials. Then what we can do on our website is create a profile for them based on this profile over here. And we can store a version of their profile in our own database, which is really cool. So this is a very, very simplistic and bird's eye view of the whole procedure, but we'll be diving much, much deeper throughout the course. And we'll be creating the whole process from scratch using a library called passport.js. And this is gonna simplify the amount of code that we have to write. And it handles a lot of the interaction between our application and the third party service like Google, okay? So all of this interaction right here is handled by passport.js. We don't have to worry too much about it. We just kind of insert passport at different sections in our application and that's gonna take care of the rest for us. So I'm gonna show you how to do all of this from absolute scratch. Now, as always, because I'm so freaking awesome, I provided you with all of the course files for this series. So you'll find those on the OAuth playlist right here on my GitHub. This link is gonna be right down below in the description. So each lesson is gonna have a different branch. So for example, if you wanna check out the code uh, to do with lesson 10, you just select the lesson 10 branch right here and you can browse or download that code right here or you can just clone the whole thing to your desktop. Okay, so two more things I wanna show you. That is the text editor I'm gonna be using. That is Atom, completely free and very cool. And also CMD or Commander, still don't know how to pronounce that. And this is a console emulator for Windows. You don't need this. I just prefer using this rather than the default Windows command prompt. Okay, so there we go. There is your whirlwind tour into OAuth. 
in the very next tutorial we're going to dive right in and see how OAuth works and if my friends you like these videos please 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 do not forget to share subscribe and like and I'm going to see you in the very next video